Hi, this is Cheryl St. Pierre of Majestic Wire Artworks. Uh, a little while ago, I um, put up a photo of this pendant. Um, it wasn't oxidized then, but it's oxidized now. And I asked if you would like a tutorial of it. And the reason why I was asking is because it's very chaotic to make. It's very uh, unpredictable how it's going to turn out. And it is fun to make, but if you're a person that wants to be meticulous, like I am, you will have difficulties making this project because it is beyond your control and how it's going to turn out. You just don't know. And everyone will be different. Now, what you're what I did with this one is for the I, the inside bead is a 14 millimeter round crystal. I recommend using a, a large bead as the center. It could be a coin bead that's 14 millimeters or 16 millimeters. I wouldn't go larger than that. Uh, I wouldn't go too small either because then the measurements of the circumference wire, it's not going to fit it too well. So, but I did find out like this one I used four millimeter rondelle beads is um, the beads for the outside. And this one, um, I changed it up and I used six millimeter rondelle beads and it really changed it. It's bigger. Um, today, I'm going to use four millimeter bicones. So just that way you can see um, what the difference is going to be with the different beads and how it affects your project. And it gives you the variation. And also, um, this is oxidized. It isn't buffed, but it will um, naturally get accents and the inside will go darker and the outside will go a little bit lighter. I love that effect. It seems to really suit this necklace. So... Um, definitely one that I would consider oxidizing so now you can see what it looks like oxidized and not oxidized side by side and um, so what you're going to need for your project is you're going to need 20 gauge dead soft wire I'm using raw copper uh, you're going to need your chain nose pliers your needle nose pliers uh, chain nose pliers, needle nose pliers, same thing. Um, your uh, snips and your round nose pliers. And for making your bail, you may choose to use a pencil. I used a pencil for these ones. Um, I've used a pencil um, for the one I made today. Um, you're not going to watch me watch, uh, make it though. I I have a video I'm inserting that I made from the previous video I did uh, making bales and I just figured I'd kill two birds with one stone and make the two videos using the same little blurb that'll be sh coming up shortly and um, six four millimeter bicones six or seven we might use a seventh not sure it's it's um, wishy-washy as to how that goes because this anything can happen with this pendant I tell you okay so um, yeah let's go on to making that inserting that uh, bail video next uh, but what you might want to do is uh, don't start working on your wire until after we get back from that and we're gonna put it in right here so what I'm going to do is because we're pretending that this is uh, a long length of wire and I'm not going to show that with a long length because it always hits the camera. But we usually try and find the middle of the wire. Well, depends, I mean, on your instructions, of course. And you make a 40 degree, I mean a 90 degree bend to make your, your bail loop. Now. Um, with when you make another bale where it was started at a point like this that bend after the measurement is um, 
you're bending backwards. That's what this bend is. So you're just pretending it had a necklace there already. And I'm thinking this is where some people find this confusing is because they don't know, understand how this bend plays in what role it plays. So now I'm going to make, I want to make a large, um, you could use a pencil for this if you wanted to and wrap around twice with a pencil, but I'm just using the largest part of my pliers to make as large as I can with my pliers. Okay, and you wrap twice. Okay, so what's nice about this is you didn't have to measure the length you needed here for the desired wraps. So um, the necklace that I am, because I'm going to use this little blurb of this video in another video, um, I want it to have nine wraps. This particular necklace needs nine wraps. So that's what we're going to do. And if I was to use long, my long wire to do this, to sh demonstrate it, it would be hitting the, the camera constantly. And for those making the necklace with me, it's this isn't gonna be easy. So be patient with yourself and do it gradually because you've got three feet of wire fighting you. Okay, so that's four, five, six, seven, Eight. And then make sure it's nine. Okay. And there. There you go. So now you could continue on making the rest of your necklace. Okay, so we are back from um from that video with the bail. And so what I want you to do is find the center point of your um, six and a half foot 20 gauge wire, which uh, in metric is 0 0.81 millimeter wire and um, six and a half foot, six times three, 195 centimeters um, is how long it is in metric 195 centimeters so find your center center point make a 90 degree angle and then make your bail just as as in your uh, long wire as just as in the little clip i put put in previously and we did nine wraps here and um you just want to make sure that it's your loops are round that your uh, wrapping is straight because um, you, you can see from the back, you can see your, um, uh, wraps. So you want the back to look nice too, which the back of this, of this, um, pendant is almost as pretty as the front. So, I mean, if it flips over, it's going to look pretty anyway. Some with this type of design, I find a lot of my customers always put on their necklaces backwards because they think that the back is the front because the beads are more evident from the back than they are from the front. They're more peekabooish from the front. Okay, so the first next thing I want you to do once you've got your bail made, <clears throat> you've got your wraps fairly straight, nice and cinched up to be strong and neat looking. I want you to take you see this center wire here. The one that's in the middle of all the wraps. I want you to put your bead, your 14 millimeter bead on that one. Now you could use a flat bead, a coin bead here too. And if you do, this is the only change it's going to make. Um, we are going to, you got to decide what's the front of your bale because one side looks nicer than the other. And then uh, we're going with the round bead, we are going to um, just go on the side, but a little bit on the back side. And we're going to wrap around that bead to lock it in place and then wrap 
around I'm just twisting it around so this wraps around and let's do that twice okay and there it is and now we're going to do some twists do it just a few not too long make this about let's measure it just to see how long this is from the bead let's make it about 10 10 millimeters one centimeter okay and now I want you to take your one wire is going to end up being longer than the other put the bead one of your bicones or six millimeter rondelles or four millimeter rondelles whichever you choose to do put that bead on the longer wire and wrap well this one is a rondelle i must have had my rondelles and bicones mixed up it was not going to matter because it's not going to be prominent and now i want you to do twisting so it looks like it's three twists and then put on the next one on the longest wire again and we want to do this using six beads and this one's a bicone definitely and then again It's, so it looks like it's three wraps or twists. Okay. And another bicone on the longest wire. It's so hard for me to show it on the camera because it's so long. Oh, my wires are fighting each other here. Okay, so that's three. And then put your next bead on. You know, it really doesn't matter which wire you put it on, I guess. having difficulties putting my bead on there we go because in the end it's not going to make that much of a difference I find okay that's four and three twists Fifth bead. One, two, three, four, five, and one more bead. And I can feel that the wires are getting shorter. So as you're doing all this work and after your bale, try not to straighten out your wires at all. They're going to get all kinked up, all bent up. Um, we want to keep the wire soft. So let's not straighten it out at all until this point. Okay, even at right after you take it off the roll, 
don't straighten your wire um, because it's this it's kind of it's going to make it hard for you if you if you do. Okay, so now this is the end. What I think I will have you do is take your round nose pliers at this point. Now, I, of course, it's going to fight me on the camera and make it. Yeah, make make a loop with the one wire and give it one wrap only, okay? And all this is, is just to give your wire an anchor. And then wrap both of them around once. And that's just to give it an anchor. That's all it's for, okay. Now, so now I've got it there and now we're going to do some finger swirling just going up on each side of the bead and I am going to straighten out my wire at this point just this is awkward okay so I just did about six inches here don't want to do too much okay and now I'm going to do a finger swirl fairly tight on the side of the bicone like this we don't want it to be too big and then we're gonna the, at the center because the beads just gonna peekaboo so don't worry about how much is showing I'm gonna wrap so see how I'm over the center between the two beads I'm gonna wrap around like that so now I'm coming on the other side and now I'm going to do a finger swirl on the other side of the next bead you don't want it big you want to keep it calm, compact because it looks nicer on the pendant if it's not too big so now I'm doing the same thing I, I wrapped around once so now I'm going to be on the other do a finger swirl on the other side And a nice tight small finger swirl and now I'm going to wrap around I'm going to center there so this is the pattern that it's making so it's got I'm going to come up close a finger swirl on that side a finger swirl on that side a finger swirl on that side and the smaller you can go the the day uh, the smaller your pendants gonna be I mean this is definitely um, something you could play around with one time you could do it bigger next time you could do it smaller see if you like it if you don't like it cut it up if you're using copper um, cost is minimal but you know the experience the learning that you're gonna do doing this it's actually getting you to know your wire now I do need to do some straightening again just a little bit okay And another small one okay so now we're up next to the bead the big bead that is okay and which is the front that's the front okay. so I went around just like I did in between and now we're gonna work up only three beads um, <clears throat> and I don't want you wrapping up on the third bead so I'm just warning you now hopefully I won't forget so I'm going to do a finger swirl on that side so now we're coming on the opposite sides of the beads and we want it to be small so wrapped there Another small finger swirl there and I'm going to wrap around there and then another small finger swirl but I'm not going to wrap around there because what we're going to do 
is okay we got to make sure we've got the right side of the bale I want that one okay so I am twisting this around because it was facing the wrong side and now I'm going to bend this up around the bead so one two three beads okay so before I wrap around I'm not going to wrap around the center there I'm going to wrap around the center and the uh, underneath the bale. Now this is kind of tricky, so I'm trying to hold it up to the camera so you can see. Okay, so now I'm at the top here, and I'm holding it underneath the bale. Hold your swirl in place so it doesn't move, and I'm going to push it down so that it comes up between the two swirls so that it keeps it in pattern but at, at, and locked it onto the bale. Hopefully that makes sense. So I went down here and it crisscrossed at the back around the, the wraps of underneath the bale. Okay, now I need to straighten my wire a little bit again. Pull it into place. And now I'm going to do a tiny finger swirl. And now that was probably almost the hardest part of the whole pendant right there, just locking it into place. So now I'm going to wrap around there, doing the traditional tiny finger swirls. And then the final finger swirl around that last bead. And I'm going to actually wrap around there. Okay, and now we're going to wrap around this bead. Okay, and see that loop? It's just going to, we're going to put it in the back. And we're going to take now these wires at this point see the one wire is longer than the other it's been it's been consistent in keeping its length let's make the two wires the same length this is going to make the next part easier and you know i got plenty of length depending on what bead, size of bead you are using it's going to make it's going to make a difference as to what you're going to use i mean how much wire you're going to use so now I've got this wire, I'm tucking the loop at the back, and I'm going to put this wire down here underneath. See, in that part, that little space there, I'm going to put both wires through there, and I'm going to push them through, and the wire's kinking up. Don't worry about it. Now pull one wire at a time and we're going to tighten it up and, and we're fastening it down. Okay, and now I've got it. That's the back. I'm going to come around the front and I'm going to do a finger swirl just to cover that. And I'm going to go so that that's what the finger swirl looks like. Um, the one necklace, I put another bead there. You don't need to. It's easier if you don't, but if you wish to, you can. And now I'm going to tuck this wire in the back again. I mean, down the front, sorry. So I'm going down here. I'll put it so the pendants face up. I wanna, don't want to ruin that swirl, so I'm putting my thumb over it to hold it there. And I'm pushing the wire. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? It would be easier if I snip this shorter. Then I'm not fighting with it. Because I know I'm not going to use this wire. So I'm giving myself about an inch and a half to work with. And now I'm going to take my pliers 
and push it down and pull them one at a time without racking that swirl. So I'm doing it gently. Okay, so that swirl stayed intact quite nicely. And you're probably wondering, look how wonky this is. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Now we're going to um, snip this off shorter, about a centimeter, half an inch, less than half an inch. Okay, so it's got that much. And all that is for is to take your chain nose pliers, give it a band, and tuck it in somewhere so that the end is hidden. It won't unravel, it's a too stiff a wire to do that, and it's no pointy ends. It's, it's just in place. Okay, so the next thing you gotta do is you're gonna straighten out that bale. And if you need to put your pencil back in or round nose pliers back in um, to make it rounder, do so. And then the next thing is we're gonna squish it all together. So, you see all that space there? We're gonna get rid of that. You can take the side of your pliers and push it in. And you're just gonna push and push. You can use your fingers if you wish, if your fingers are strong enough. And you just wanna make it circular and closer. I did this with the other two. This, I don't wanna wreck that swirl, so I'm not gonna push on that swirl, but And when you oxidize this wire and it goes dark brown, the little crystals have more of a peekaboo. You see how they glitter? Um, this time I chose to do clear crystals, which would go with anything. And that was just to show you that clear works nice. I mean, if you don't have a lot of variety, it's perfect. Okay, and you just keep pushing it in until it's compacted enough that you like the look of it. Still looks a bit airy up there. You just keep at it till you're happy. I'm just, I'm letting you see my process so that you're not thinking you're fidgeting too much. Because with a lot of work, a lot of wire wrapping, the finishing fidgeting is, makes the world of difference and is sometimes time consuming. Yeah, I'm trying to make it round as well. So if you bent it in and it needs to come out, just give it a twist, it'll round it up. And I think, I think that's, hmm, did I bump my phone? I must have bumped my phone, there we go. Okay, so it still seems a little airy there, and it's being difficult for me. I just got to keep working at it. But there, I think it's pretty good. And that's all there's to it. It's a lot of fidgeting, and it's, it's un, you can't control the, your finished product, but it's meant to have that messy look. And it's kind of cool. It's not everybody's taste. I understand that, but then that's that's subjective to everybody, right? So, 
Thank you for joining me in this video. I really hope that you do like it and that you do try it. It's gonna get you familiar with wire for sure and getting to know its characteristics. Great practice piece to oxidize with and um, whether you use liver of sulfur, liver of sulfur or fumes of ammonia or uh, other chemicals to do your oxidizing. Uh, some people use eggs. To me, uh, I don't want to use eggs. <laughs> I like the um, fumes of ammonia uh, that I show in my technique videos. And um, I think that's the best thing for me because if I sneak it in that container really fast, I am not getting the fumes. And it's safe to do it that way. So. Okay, well, again, thank you for joining me. God bless, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.